Hey guys, welcome back to the Kingdom Bringer podcast. Good to be with you. Hope you guys have had a an amazing weekend, an amazing couple of weeks. We've haven't met together, Scott and I, in my basement for a while. Uh, the last two episodes were recorded a couple weekends ago, so it's good to be back. Scotty is here. Scotty, what's up? Hey, what's up, peoples? Good to be back, man. It's been a couple weeks, like Darren said, but ready to knock this one out, ready to get into some... Uh, I think we're going to go a little bit deeper today and some personal stuff, maybe. Is that kind of the plan? Uh, you're, yeah, you're going to get personal with us. Um, I'm going to keep things surfacey because I don't want people knowing my business. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't want them in my uh, private crawl spaces, if you know what I mean. Don't want them in your head spaces. Just as, as kidding. NFCs. Just kidding. So I want to remind you guys before we get started to rate, review, subscribe, and share. If you have not done so on iTunes, I need you to do it now. Quit talking about it. Do it. Quit dreaming about it. Quit do it. Telling your friends you're gonna do it. Do it. Get on iTunes. Rate, review, subscribe, and share. Give us a rating. Give us a five star rating. Give us a review. Tell us what you think, and then share it with your friends. You can check us out on Spotify. You can check us out on iTunes, on Podbean, on Google Play, and you can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the Kingdom Bringer Podcast. Check us out on Facebook at KB Podcast. We want to have some interaction with you guys. So uh, if you have any questions or comments, you can email us at thekingdombringers at gmail.com. We had a Q&A episode a couple episodes ago, and that was good. Keep bringing your questions on, and we'll we'll get to them maybe one at a time. Each episode, we'll answer a question or two. Uh, so we want to keep that going. So do it. Share it with your friends from any of those platforms. It just helps us out. We want this to be something accessible to as many people as possible. Also, if you feel led to give financially and to support, you can text the word Will Rhodes, W-I-L-R-O-A-D-S, to 77977. You will get a text link back to where you can give super easy online. It's very, very easy to do. So give it a shot. Just text the word Will Rhodes to 77977. You can partner with us financially. Pray about it first. See if the Lord uh, encourages encourages you to do it, and then do it. It's easy, and we would appreciate the help. So thank you, guys. That is it. We're going to get right into it. This is episode number 23. Scott, I was also, I've kind of also decided that I think we're going to take a little break after episode 25. What episode is this? This is 23. Okay. So we got like two more to go, and then we'll take a break kind of towards in around December, and we'll come back hot and heavy uh, after the first of the year. I think that's going to be the plan. Sweet. Kind of put pound out 25 episodes, and then... Uh, that's a milestone, by the way. It is a good, clean number to pause at for a moment. Woo. And then I think we'll... Um, I don't know. I've got some plans for some future stuff for this show, for some cool sound bites and some some cool programming things that are going to be fun so yeah we'll come back kind of hot and new uh, after the first of the year and by then i think the two brothers podcast is going to be swinging come on swinging full blast so we're excited about that too anyway here we go scott tilly why don't you pray to start this thing off yeah as we open ourselves up deeply into whatever <laughs> <laughs> deeply from hearing from the lord yes go for it yeah, I just want to say, Jesus, we, we just praise you. Uh, thank you for a platform to speak who you are and to show your love to the world. Um, I just praise I praise you for what you're doing, God, and uh, what happens sometimes um, in the unseen that actually manifest in the scene. And I thank you for we get to see the fruit of, of the works that you've uh, produced in our lives and I just I just pray for anyone listening that um, that you just feel um, just feel the movement of the spirit within your life like in a major way. I know that this there can be seasons of um, just waiting. There can be seasons of waiting, and sometimes that that waiting can uh, really I don't know. We can, we can really get to a place where we feel like nothing's moving. So I just pray that uh, for peace over those that are experiencing that right now in Jesus' name, and I pray for um, just your joy to be ever present in those times as well. And I thank you for the podcast. I thank you for your bride, the church, every 
um, fellowship and every communicational gathering that that's going on um, to glorify and to just lift praises to you. I just thank you for this time my brother and I had to sit down and just chat about how good you are and how awesome you're working in the lives of us and those around us. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I was having a conversation. I think we were all having a conversation uh, with our friend Chris Hagen. And we were all just really excited about this new season in, in ministry for all of us and kind of how we're God's really allowing us all to work together and grow together. And uh, he made the comment, he said that God has prepared us, each of us, our whole lives for this moment right here. And it just really got me thinking and reflecting a little bit about my own personal life and uh, the victories that I've gone through, the tragedy that I've gone through, the ups and the downs and the crappy situation, just the things that I've gone through that I think God's kind of used to, to just launch us forward into this place right here. I think it's a healthy thing for all of us to do to kind of reflect every once in a while about the good and the bad. You know, the, the, the Bible says that uh, he takes everything that the enemy means for harm and he turns it for good. And so yeah. I think it's, it's cool for us to think about even those bad things that we've overcome and think about those, uh, those rough patches, how looking back, they probably weren't as rough as we thought they were for one. Right. You know, yeah. but we can, we can see those things and just see how we're, we're molded and we're shaped and we're refined and we're sharpened throughout our whole life for like these breakthrough moments of, for us, it's, it's in a time of ministry where we just kind of like God's given us the desires of our heart when it comes to ministry, it seems like. So mm -hmm. it just got me thinking, man, I think it'd be a cool episode for us to kind of talk a little bit about that personally, just kind of sharing some, some thoughts about that in our own lives individually. And so I want to like open it up to you first. Um, if you were to reflect back on, on, on your life, um, what are some, what are some of those, some of those moments that you feel like really refined you and have brought you to where you're at now in ministry? Like what, what were the hard, what were some of those hard things that maybe weren't so hard? <laughs> yeah. Um, looking back, that's a good question. I, we were talking about this a little bit earlier, uh, texting back and forth about kind of how we wanted to portray what, what we wanted to say today. And so I, I just began to pray as I was kind of cleaning house earlier this morning and like asking the Lord, you know, what, what do you want me to do with that? And I, and I think that that's the simplest prayer that I can actually pray is what do you want me to do with this? Or what do you want me to do with that? And the Lord began to speak into my heart, um, that no matter what happens in life, like we have an opportunity to choose joy or to choose anger or to choose whatever, but ultimately it falls into our lap on what we choose. I, I think about um, the garden scene the night before the crucifixion, and Judas shows up with the accusers, and and all these people are gathered around to take Jesus, and to essentially take his life. And, you know, he, he says something that really resonates with, like, the power that he beholds, and he still beholds, and he was beholding then. He says, you know, I have the power to bring down legions of angels and I could wipe, basically wipe out the whole earth with just one call. And he, he chose humility. He chose death over, um, power in that, in that instance, so to speak. Right. But, and I'm not taking away from the power of death, the death and the resurrection, but in that moment, like he really chose the, the most humble thing he could in that moment. And that was to go ahead and go with the plans that God had to um, have him crucified so we, so that we may be rectified. Yeah. And so for me, man, like there's a couple instances that come to mind when I'm thinking about ministry in particular, about the next move and the next wave, as we like to call it. And we can get as Christianese if, as if we want, as we want. But, you know, when you're in the midst of those, man, the transitional parts where God really wants to take you from glory to glory, you don't see the glory until you're experiencing it. The transitional two in between is actually um, the part where you said, man, this sucks. Like, it's just, yeah. it's tough. And yeah. for me, um, every time there's been a movement 
that God has moved me from one place to the next, it's never come easy. It's never been, oh, here, let's go ahead and take one step and it's over. Like, it's always been loss of friendships, loss of church members, loss of of uh, relation, you know, communication with some people. And um, I think for one, uh, when we first, uh, when I was first introduced to the Holy Spirit, rather, um, I was just immediately addicted to that relational value that, that God really wanted with me through his spirit. And, and I wanted that for my congregation. So I started really diving into the gifts and the things of the spirit. And, and that's not well received sometimes. Right. And, and I remember going through that thinking, okay, Lord, if this is what you want me to do, and this is how it's going to be, if it's going to be this hard to get breakthrough, then maybe I'm doing the wrong thing. Like I remember doubting the movement. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, like, is this really what I'm supposed to be doing? Is, is this really where you want me to go with this? And that was definitely one for me um, that caused me to think about, am I even supposed to minister? Am I even fit to be a pastor or a minister of God's word? Or, And so it's not like these things don't come. I think people immediately meet us or meet others that are spirit-filled and go, man, this must have just always been easy for you. Right. Yeah. And they have no idea, like, at that moment, we could be going through some serious right. stuff. And this isn't about me. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I don't want to portray that this is about me, but... Um, yeah. th- just to, to hit on that, um, to try to kind of land this plane a little bit what, on what you're saying, that moment for me when we transitioned from a regular Sunday going church to like a spirit filled God, f- you know, I'm not saying that we weren't God fearing, but like a spirit filled um, place where, where his, his spirit can be stewarded in the atmosphere. Like that was tough. Yeah. But then you really get to see like, okay, who's really just doing Sunday and who's really in it just to have a better relationship with the Lord? So that was one for mine. I mean, there's, yeah. there's plenty of those where where I could think of instances like that where I can look back and go, wow, I'm glad I went through that. Yeah, That was really preparing me for the next season and the next step and, yeah. and the next wave of glory in, in, in my life. Um, so No, that's good. And one thing that I want to really get into today too is even going back further, man, I, I feel like there's things from my childhood that have shaped me. And it's funny that you brought up the garden scene because I, a lot of us remember uh, Jesus getting captured. We, we, we remember what Peter did. He pulled a sword out and he chopped a guy's ear off. And Jesus said, what? He said, if you live by the sword, you die you'll by die it. by the sword. And that comment right there is a lot what we're talking about right now. Like that was Peter's lifestyle led him to that mm-hmm. moment. Where he was, Peter was a very reactionary guy. Yeah. And that came from his past yeah. situations. Things that happened in his life leading up to that moment helped him become like this reactionary guy. Yeah. To where his, his, his natural human response was, I'm going to pull my sword out and I'm going to fight this guy. Mm-hmm. And Jesus was actually training him to, to not react that way, but to set the tone and to, um, to follow humility like you talked about so with that like there's so many things that right now that i'm still struggling with and battling with that like were a lifetime yeah. of things yeah. you know coming from a a divorced family you know growing up in that um i never really understood the the power that not having a father figure in my life was until i was older mm-hmm. like i didn't i don't think i complained about it that much i, I missed my dad Mm-hmm. But I didn't complain about the, you know, not having a figure around all that stuff until I was later. And I realized, man, that, that affected me, mm-hmm. you know, and that made me, I probably had a lot of daddy issues, <laughs> you know, that were found out in my adult life from that, um, just past relationships, dealing with pornography, you know, that kind of stuff mm-hmm. like shaped, shaped who I, who I was. And that's stuff that I've struggled with, you know, until recently in my adult life Mm -hmm. and um i don't know just stuff like that too i I think it's good for us to just look back and say man i went through all that hell i went through all that stuff to get to where i'm at you know i i I think of the fire and how it refines us Mm -hmm. you know and how, how how things are refined in the fire and i've often spent time talking a lot about not believing that I had much of a testimony because I was born and raised in a Christian home and I got saved when I was eight years old and didn't really struggle with 
sex and alcohol and drugs and all that stuff. Um, what? Are you staring me down? I'm, no, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking right at you. you. You know what I mean, Scott? You know what I mean? And I've always said that, but then, man, the, the Lord just really showed me that that's a testimony in itself, you know? Yeah. Staying pure yeah. and staying whole. Yeah. It's, it's a big deal. Um, and, and yes, I've had my vices and I've had my struggles, but, um, I don't know. It was a healthy experiment, man, for me to, to take what Chris said about God has prepared us our whole lives for this moment right Mm -hmm. here. And so I think about me and just some struggles that I've had in ministry. Um, humility would definitely be one of them. Yeah. Um, I think when you, when you find out that you have a gift, it's easy to just kind of run with that and you kind of leave people in the dust maybe, or Mm -hmm. leave like mentally, you know, like if you're not on board with me, then I'm just going to, you know, it's yeah. Bring some friction and stuff. So humility is definitely something that's had to be developed in my life. Um, and honestly it's for me, I think the pride, if there's ever been an appearance of pride in my life, it's probably been an overcompensation for, um, insecurity that i've had to wow be honest. it's probably yeah. an opposite yeah like because i've heard that i've heard people in my life say that i'm prideful or whatever and i just don't feel it i don't get it because mm-hmm. i'm like i'm the opposite in my heart i'm like mm-hmm. i have like low self-esteem and i have like a lot of insecurities <laughs> and so i think it's been something where i probably swung the other direction like overcompensated yeah. like yeah. yeah my heart feels like i can't do anything yeah and i'm gonna show everybody mm. <laughs> that i actually can yeah and so yeah i don't know i think that, that's well, probably th- an issue for a lot of young ministers probably well let's let's just let's just back up for a moment about the yeah. story you were talking about yeah. with peter it's just kind of hit me like with peter and jesus when he draws a sh- when he draws a s- sword you know jesus had explained to peter like you're gonna deny me three times man so he had to like <laughs> yeah. what do you think is oh i'm gonna show him i'm gonna cut this dude's ear off yeah like yeah. I ain't going nowhere, Lord. Go. And, yeah. and no, and, and Jesus, knowing in the next day, he's going, he's going to go through that's with right. what he prophesied over yeah. him. Like yeah. you're going to deny me three times. Yep. You know, that's like good. it or not, that's prophecy. Like, hey, you're going to do this, that's and he good. did it. <laughs> so, so he's like overcompensating. Like, that's right. and this is the last miracle that Jesus performed. By the way, that's right. This is the very last miracle, yep. and yep. and it's Malchus, which is like a high official. This wasn't some punk in the Roman army. Like this. This dude was the real deal. Yep. And every every bit of what happened, Peter could have been killed for on the spot. So Jesus knew that. So he grabs dude's ear and he's like, got to save you again, Pete. That's he right. just kind of patches That's it right. back up. And he's like, yep. I haven't forgotten about you. Like use the, you said everything that happens is kind of a uh, forecoming of who we are. Yeah, Man, what an opportunity for Peter to look at that and go, wow, even in his death. Yes. He was still trying to save me even before his death. And I don't know, that just really caught me when you were saying that. But every bit of that shaped a relationship with Jesus and Peter after that. That's right. Three days later, he comes back. And what's Jesus say? Yeah. He says, tell Peter and the disciples. Right. He makes sure to put him first. That's right. Tell this dude, I'm back and that it's okay. And then he basically saying, don't hang it over your head. Yep. You forget you 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 forsake me by denying me three times, but I don't care. I'm yep. back and I came to change the world. And you know what? The opportunity that I gave you before when you're going through all that, the opportunity that I gave you when I said on this I'll build my church. Yeah. You know, we look a couple chapters later and he looks at him dead in the eye and says, Get behind <laughs> me, right. Satan. Yeah. Like so even Peter's life, man, like everything yeah. he went through, okay? Yep developed him to who he was as a disciple for Jesus. And I believe I, Darren, I just believe that we carry the same anointing, like that generational anointing. When Jesus said, go make disciples of all the nations, that's a trickle down effect. Here we are. Disciples of disciples of disciples of disciples. And here we are. Right. Right. So all those things spoken into us and regardless of what, what we're going through, we know that the disciples had to go through some tough stuff, man. They got whipped and, left naked by that one tormented demon. I mean, right. there was things going on where every time that they had an issue, they could always run back to the source though. Well, a lot of, a lot of them grew up in, in, in fishermen families too. And just think of all the, the amazing things that they experienced on the water, you mm-hmm. know, with Jesus and how that's still, you know, Peter walking on water and them going through storms and just, I don't know. There's a lot of, 
there's a lot of cool things that can be can be said and be seen from from those things too. The place that we minister from is brought on by the by the places that we've been ministered to. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. it really is. Like when I when we get up and we share testimony in with our call it a sermon, call it a message, call it a teaching, call it a prophetic. If we stand up and we minister from that, and that's, I think that's ultimately what it was designed for. D was to be ministered to yeah. from a place of growth, not a place of pain. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that God won't use your pain and, and use it to get you to the promise, but like when we try to minister from pain, like from your past experiences or our divorces or our family breakings or whatever, like you're going to reach some people that you know may have a, 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 a on a poverty level that understand that, and I'm not saying they're po- you know it's a poverty mindset, but on a poverty level, they'll understand it. But then where do they go from there? Because if I can if I can come to you in a, in agreement on some things, or I can confide in you with some things that we've been through together, we can choose to stay in those things if we don't look forward, to, right. you know, to what's next yeah. and to the next glory. So how do we use those? How do we use those instances in our life to say, yeah, that happened to me, but that doesn't define who I am. Yeah. You know, when God spoke over me, this is what he says. And that's not, that's not vain. I mean, that, I just call that knowing who you are, you know, knowing who you are in the kingdom. And, and I think that that's pivotal for us as, as leaders, as ministers of, of God's covenant and his word. Like, yeah, we've went through that stuff, but that does not any way define who I am now. That's good. It, it, It may have. It may have been a part of this growing process, but that's not me. Yeah. Let me tell you who I am because this is who my dad tells me who I am. Yeah, that's good. Type of deal. So I feel like it's, uh, you know, I've I've said this a few times, but just the idea of a of a horse being spurred. You know, a lot of times we think that if if, if you're not careful, you're going to think that means you you hurt a horse and you spur a horse and it comes to a stop. That's not what happens. It actually it goes like you spur mm-hmm. them so that they go forward. And so that the idea of spurring each other on, there's going to be some pain there. Like that's, uh, what, yeah. that, that's what that means, initial pain. And so all these things that we've gone through, man, man, all these um, these hard times or these these uh, moments that were meant to spur us on, it actually just brought us to a, I don't know, just a almost a correction in our path, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, God can take what the enemy means to steal, kill, and destroy, yeah, and he can use it to just spur us to on bring life to that the one moment. that brought life and brought life yeah. abundantly you know I mean, good. he's always going to have to try he's always going to try to counteract what god's doing yep. and we talked about that a couple episodes ago um he can't create anything he's not the okay. creator man he's yep. just he's just counterfeit. a broke yep. just a broke counterfeit dude and um i was i was just thinking about this scripture earlier i just want to read a little bit from psalm 16 um it just got me thinking about where our portion is like where do we gather our portion and I think if we're gathering our portion in the wrong places, then we can kind of stay in that defeated attitude or that defeated place. But if we know that our portion comes from the Lord and kind of from that um, flowing of, of living water, because we know that the God's water is, is like a fountain, man. It doesn't stop. It's, it's fresh and it's new. And it's not this stagnant pond that's just kind of chilling out somewhere. Those are good for fishing, but that's, yeah. that's, not, that's not good for freshness, you yeah. know. And so I was thinking about this scripture in Psalm 16, 5, and it says, Lord, you are my portion and my cup of blessing. You hold my future. Like, there's so much promise in that alone. Like if I draw my portion from him, then I'm, I'm going to receive nothing but blessings. Yeah. You know, if I draw that portion from the father and the father's love, then my portions are always overflowing. It's like a full, it's like a full bowl of soup, man. Like it just doesn't end. It just keeps, the portion just keeps being poured in and we receive the blessing and we can trust it, you know, from that goodness that he provides our future is secure it's secure in him. And no matter what our past look like, we have a secured future in the father. And that, that just for me, that when we're facing things like this, you know, we've had things happen this week that, that just, yeah. you know, we, we understand it to be spiritual warfare. Like we really do. It's, we can talk about it and we'll go, man, you know, the enemy was on attack today, bro. Right. You know, he, he had some things stirred up in the spirit and well, what am I giving life to? Right. Am I so focused on what he's doing that I've forgotten about what's already been done? Yeah. And then I fight from this, you know, from this position of victory. 
not for victory, but from it. And it can really change your mindset, man. Like it can really, I can wake up and I can say, all right, I'm gonna get my armor on, which we all should, you know, but I want, I need to know that even though God calls me to put that armor on, like he's, he's calling me to walk with that armor with an attitude of Jesus took care of this. Well, at some point you should just keep the armor on, right? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I think that's a lot good. of times yeah. we, we do yeah. spend a lot more time just like striving to put the armor on. Mm-hmm. It's like, why did you ever take it off? Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to get ready because I stay ready kind of thing, go. right? Like that's there the way it should be. That's good. You know, and, it, and it's so good. It is yeah. right because what happens is we, we focus on, just the wrong things all day long. And, we, and and I think that the Lord has really called us to look at this thing through an opportunity, opportunistic lens. Yeah. How can my glory be revealed in this? That's good. You know, um, I've heard it said, I can't remember who said that. I, I'm, I'm not even going to drop a name cause I'll probably mess it up, but not why God, but what, Yeah. what can I do? What can you do with this? Yeah. That's good. You know, and that's, that's huge. That yeah. helped me a lot. Um, just in everyday life, no matter what it is. So I, man, that's, that's good. That's just challenging to think if we just, and we talk about changing our perspective all the time, brother. Yeah, we do. We talk about it all the time. And it's, I think that you and I would both come to agreement. The things you speak are the things that take place. That's right. And, and really that's why the word says that there's life and death in the, in the tongue. There's yeah. power of life and death because, man, what you're speaking is what will yeah. ultimately be. Yeah. If I wake up every day and I have a goal in mind and I say, I'm going to hit 30K by 15 years of age from a lawn mowing business. Yeah. Every day I speak that over myself at eight years old, 10 years old. I'll bet you I hit that goal. Yeah. I'll bet I do. You yeah. know. But if I wake up and I go... Hope I get five lawns today, man. Yeah. I just really hope I do. If yeah. I don't, you know, if, you know, it, you see how it just yeah. changes attitude. Yeah. I think I'm gonna go get a lawn mowing business. <laughs> go talk. K, go talk to. Extra sounds good. Go talk to Baker Blackburn. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are some like? What's uh, for you? If you if you did this, because you can look back, being free from those things right now. That's the difference. I think. I don't yeah. think this is a healthy. This isn't a healthy game to play if you're not free from those things. Oh, dude, no. But if you're free from them, which I know Scott Tilly is, what are some of those things that kind of help define who you are? Like, what are those hard things that maybe like uh, you think about iron sharpening iron Mm -hmm. and how it's not meant to bring a dull blade, but it's meant to just sharpen you. What are some of those things in your life that have kind of sharpened you to where you're at right now? (laughs) My wife. Yes, that's good. A hundred percent. You're looking or you're hearing from a man who is complete opposite ends of the spectrum than his bride. And we're just two different people, bro. Right. I mean, a hundred percent, two different people. And they always say opposites attract. Yeah. Well, that is true, but there's got to be some commonality in those two or there's not even, they're not going to find each other. Right. So... Um, the commonality with my wife and I was in a bar on a Saturday say, night. So you had something in common. <laughs> uh, totally different story, but um, anyways, <laughs> she has taught me um, that simplistic is sometimes better. Yeah, like I'm over the top sometimes, just like loud, obnoxious. I'm a kid at heart, and she's such a grown up dude. Like she's so. I don't know. She looks at things from a, like a mothering level yeah. at our home. And for me, I'm just like out with the plans, man. Let's just make something happen. You yeah. know, like I, I don't, let's just do this, you know, let's just do that. And she's just really a planner. And like, if it doesn't, if it doesn't line up with her motive or her momentum, yeah, she's just like, man, I'm not interested. And I'm like, yeah. let's try it. Yeah. Let's try it. What, wait, how do we yeah. know we like it? If we don't try, you know? Yeah. So definitely her and, challenging me to be still. I've really heard the voice of God through her as to be still and just stop freaking out. Where do you think that that over, cause I'm, I want to go backwards with you. Where do you think that over excitement and stuff came from in your life? Like, where was that? Is that just something you think you always were oh, as dude, a kid no, or did that I, come from someplace? I think I've always had a zealous yeah. attitude for life. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't always in the right areas, yeah. you know, I think growing up 
going after said, what you want. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Broken home. Yeah. Mom and dad split when I was in eighth grade. Uh, my dad uh, addicted to his semi, always kind of gone, and and my brother and I and my mom, you know, going through her issues and yeah. um, with addiction. And I just think that it it really it set a firm foundation somewhere. Like I had to build a foundation somewhere. And first, I fastened it out of all these idols in my life that whether it be football, whether it be girls, whether it be drinking, whether it be partying, whatever. First, I fastened it out of that, and when I got to the point where it was like none of this stuff measures up. Like it's not matching the joy and the zealousness for my life that I have in life. Like none of it's matching yeah. where I wanted to be, yeah. you know? And, and I'm not like, my parents are amazing, dude. Like despite all that, sure. they're, they're so good. My mom, you know, so I don't want to spend a lot of time just on the dark and the gloom of that because yeah. they're amazing people. But, but like when, when I met the Lord face to face, like, and, and there wasn't a time, Darren, where I didn't believe. There's never been a time in my life where I can be like, oh, that's when I accepted Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Like, there was never a time when I did not know he was real. Yep. I, I never remember a time thinking, I wonder if this whole Jesus thing is real. Yeah. Never. Yeah. Like, even when I was out running with the devil, I still knew yeah. that he was chasing me. And see, that's <laughs> the kind of stuff, bro, that's made it very difficult for me. That's why I'm not a pastor. Because it's been very... Relating to people who doubt, mm -hmm. relating to people that don't believe is very difficult mm -hmm. for me because I'm the same way. Like I've, God's just always been so real in my life and he mm -hmm. revealed himself to me at a very young age. And when you experience him, it's like, yeah, I just know he's real. There's nothing. So else. it is very, and I'm, I'm so glad and so thankful that we have like loving pastors out there who can take the time to relate to people mm -hmm. like where they're at. Cause I've always struggled with that. And so I yeah. guess, yeah, that's a great example of what I'm talking about. Like things yeah. that have been kind of difficult and, and, and brought us to this place that we've had to really evaluate where that came from or why I am that way. But that's, yeah. that's legit. And I think, um, another thing for me, man, I, I grew up with two younger sisters. I was the oldest of three kids, uh, had two sisters Always wanted a brother, never really had. And I, I seriously went outside by myself and played stickball by myself. Mm -hmm. I played every position on the field by yeah. myself, you know? Yeah. And I, and then you, you add to that <laughs> getting your, your parents getting divorced and losing yeah. your dad. It was my mom and my two sisters. And that's just how I grew up. Yeah. You know? And it was tough. Like, um, all kinds of issues can come out of that. Mm -hmm. And then you mix in the fact, you know, getting introduced to pornography at 12 years old on top yeah. of that. And you kind of have this twisted view of, of women and, and all these yeah. things. And, yeah. um, man, it, it is, it's good to be able to look back and, and see the freedom in your life now. Mm. But I, I don't know. I, I've just had so much fun going back and just seeing, God, you've, you've brought me through some things yeah. and had to really reshape because God had a plan. Like according to Chris Hagen, God's prepared us for this moment right here where we're at mm -hmm. and, and what God's wanting to do and unleash on this region with all of Absolutely. us together. And it's like Darren Eubanks growing up in Emporia, Kansas was being shaped for this moment right here. Scott Tilly growing up in Buckland, Kansas went through some things yeah. and was being shaped. Chris Hagen growing up in Houston area mm -hmm. was being shaped and molded for this moment right here. Yeah. You know, Jason gets mm -hmm. Ryan Emery is not from here either. Yeah. He had guys in all these different places. It is kind of cool how we were all from the central central region of America. Yeah. But he brought us together, having shaped us and molded us for this moment right here. And it's just Amen. like, it's it's really, really cool. Amen. Let's take that just a little bit step further. Yeah. You can, you, you can apply that to every moment in your life. That's right. Like f waking up, going to bed in, this, in, the, in a supermarket. God has prepared me for this moment right here. That's good. Like every moment of your life can be defined in that. That's good. Now, does he always choose for you to be in the positions that we put ourselves <laughs> in? Absolutely not. Right. Like I think that's where the freedom to choose comes in. And that whole, I, the whole choice thing just keeps ringing in my head. The Lord just laid that on my heart today. Like I've given you opportunity to choose joy through X, Y, Z, through all these things. You know, and I think when we can get to that mountaintop in our lives where we can 
come to the realization, you know what, in this moment right now, I can still choose. I still have an option to choose. As Paul says, consider it pure joy. We face trials of many kinds. So all those trials that we went through, we chose that this wasn't going to be it. This wasn't going to be our end. Yeah, Yeah, this was not going to be our demise. It's not going to be, you know what, I'm folding up. You went through some things in the ministry, bro. You chose to say, I received this calling on my life. I received this gifting on my life. I received this junk that I have to go through right now in my life. Yeah. If it's going to take to get me to the next place, yeah. I'll take it. I embrace this. And we're, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's not like we have to absorb it and it becomes a part of us. No, like when you're breaking through a wall, you're going to have rocks and mortar and stuff falling on you, cutting you, hurting you. Like it's going to hurt a little bit. But when you get to the other side of that wall and you see devout freedom, Yes. Your whole perspective is like, oh, I'm, you know what? I'm glad I went through that because the next time when something like this comes up, I'm going to know how to handle it. Yeah. I'm going to know exactly what to do, when exactly, and how to do it. Yeah. So uh, we welcome them, bro. I mean, honestly, that's what you're saying when you put on the Christian coat, so to speak. Yes. You're welcoming hard times. Yeah. You're welcoming tribulations. Right. You're welcoming trials. Yeah. And when you get to the other side of those trials, tribulations, and sh- all these things, then you can say, man, I had to go through that to get to here. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Yeah. Like, you know? Yeah. I mean, pa- Paul, what did Paul say? Like at the end of this life, you should have nothing left. That's good. Absolutely nothing. Everything you have should be poured out. I think that most Christians would, would agree that they want to, they want to have a lifestyle of victory. What that means is at some point you've faced a fight. Yeah. You know, you got to fight. So man. if I've had a lifestyle of victories in my life, mm-hmm. that means I've had a lot of fights in my life. Yeah. I've had a lot of things yeah. bucking up against me and bucking up against God's plan in my life to overcome and become victorious over. So, yeah, I, I think that's just I'm just believing that there's somebody listening right now today. And maybe we haven't done the greatest job of eloquently putting this out there. I don't but, come to you with wise words. Yes, man, but, <laughs> but of power. And so I just feel like right now that there's people that can like place their hand over their heart and they can just say, God, right now in this moment, I embrace this Mm -hmm. fight. Yeah. Like I embrace what's going on in my life. God, believing that I wasn't created to fail in this. I was created to become victorious in this. I was actually created and established to overcome each and everything that comes my way. That's a good, that's a good thing to remind ourselves. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. It's a good thing for every believer to remind ourselves that God doesn't bring the the junk, but he provides the ability to overcome. And so mm-hmm. with Holy Spirit present in our lives, bring it on. Yeah. And bring it on. I want to just to add to that a little bit, like and sometimes there's there's people in your life that you need to introduce Holy Spirit to you. You know, I really feel like a lot of times we try to fight this thing completely on our own. Right. I, it will be, well, this is my fight. I don't, yes. You know, if yeah. I have an issue, like I'm texting you or I'm, you know, like, yeah. you know, I'm texting you or I'm calling you like, dude, I'm, I'm struggling in this area. Like what I need your help. And it may not be what you want to hear. Right. But it's, it's nine times out of 10. It's what you need to hear. And cause Holy spirit does more than just make you feel warm and comfy. He, he'll convict you. So sometimes we stay in a fight longer than actually needed because we choose to. Yeah. There's victory like beyond the veil, yeah. but we've chosen to stay behind the veil. Yeah. You know, like we re- there really is a place that we can get to quicker. The Israelites in the desert, man, they perfect, mar- perfect marched example. That mountain, bro. Too yep. many times. Like yep. I did a, I, I looked at the, looked at the mileage to that and it would be like, well, we'll just use Dodge since Buckland's maybe not on anybody else's map, but <laughs> it would be almost like, so it'd be almost like from Dodge city to junction city. Wow. That's how that, I mean that if I, if I did my history, right. And if I did my, and carried the two the right way I was supposed to like, to me like that, that should be a week long journey. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that shouldn't be that yeah. long. And yet by belly aching and, Oh, I guess this is just God's will for our life to bring us out in the wilderness to yeah. die. An entire generation missing out on that promise. Exactly. 
Yeah. Exactly. It's up to us to carry the promise of the yeah. next generation. Yeah. God does it through people. He's done it through people from the beginning of time. And that's the, I think that's important for people to know too, that God didn't, didn't promise the promised land to the people one time. Like it isn't right. like, it isn't like that promise was fulfilled and now there's no more promises, man. There's promises in every one of our lives yep. that he has for my family to reach. Mm-hmm. He's got for our generation to experience. Yeah. And, um, yeah, we, we can we can spend. And it, the Bible also says that they complained in their hearts before they complained to the Lord. Yeah, <laughs> they right? complained in their hearts bef- before they complained to the Lord. Yeah, and you know they griped to complain about the blessings He was giving them with manna. They griped to complain about uh, the leader that God gave them because they had to have a leader. Mm-hmm. You know, and yet the whole entire time before they complained to God, they complained in their heart. So I think that's a good lesson too that we have the ability to complain in our heart. Or we have the ability to be thankful. Amen. You know? And it's not easy. No. You know, no. I was in I was in what felt like a forty year famine <laughs> for a couple of months. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's when you're in it. I understand when you're in it. It feels like it's the darkest, deepest valley you've ever been in. But I promise you that you were created to overcome, and you were created yeah. to be victorious. So what that means is, as long as you're in relationship with God, you will overcome and you will be victorious. It isn't like you have to try harder. Mm -hmm. It isn't like you need to strive differently. It just means be in relationship with him and it's automatic that he pulls his kids out of the depths every single time. Surround your people, surround your people, surround yourself with people you can link arms with that are sharing the same vision too. And Maybe like the vision's a little different, but you know that their heart is in the right place and that they generally care to encourage and want to build you up and bring you to that next place or to that promised land. Link arms with those people, man, and just just trust that there's there's people out there that are going through the same things that you are. Like I just I really want to speak that into somebody. Like you're not alone in this thing. Yeah. You're I promise you that you're not the only one that's ever felt this way, that there's people out there that genuinely care if you just put yourself out to be heard just allow yourself to be heard and and like come into community with people that are willing to move forward and not get caught in this well i guess this this battle just may last for a couple years like yeah help them make you see and vision visualize like that the where the victory is and where it lies man and well there's there's three different things i think that are always going on in that moment if you're going through a trial, if you're going through a dark time right now, there's always somebody who's in it with you. There's always somebody who's overcome it already. And there's, and there's always, always somebody, somebody that hasn't, hasn't yet. Yeah, yeah. And so we have the opportunity to experience all three. And every moment's going to be a teaching moment for the next generation. Every moment's going to be a teaching moment for your kids or for, mm. for your loved ones that are maybe about to step in that dark valley that you can put up a stop sign before they get there. Yeah. And I think that it's just important for us to keep perspective, man. Yeah. Just keep amen. perspective. Cause if I would have, I mean, I, I lost perspective at times and that, that's the times it felt the darkest yeah. and the deepest Yeah, was when the perspective was, was off. <laughs> and yeah, you know, and if you think about those kids, those, those kids that have parents get divorced and it messes with their perspective or they never had right perspective as a child yeah. and their entire life, bro. Their entire life is spent with that initial perspective that was off and gross. And that, yeah. div- that divorce just stunted their whole yeah. growth. So they in tune are married yes. five, six times. Four. Right. Yeah, I totally get that. You, yep. you, perspective is vital. There's a, such a thing as human perspective and there's such a thing as kingdom perspective. That's right. I just believe that. Yep. I believe that kingdom looks lopsided from yep. physical Yep. Look at think about Elisha and Dothan when his yep. servant was worried about what he saw physically was the uh, Ben Hadad's army, the Armenian army coming, yep. coming at them, and all these horses and all this, you know, that surrounded the whole city. <laughs> Elisha's just like, open his eyes, man, yeah. open his eyes, Lord, and it took him praying and interceding for him to have his eyes open. He didn't know what to do in the moment, right? But his friend did. Yeah. Hey, Father, open his eyes. Yeah. And then he opens his eyes and he sees chariots of fire behind Dude. him. Like, 
that's why it's so important for us to get, like you said earlier, surround yourself with people because man, I've, I've, I've been reached out to so much lately about people that are just stuck in this church rut where their church is completely dead, not feeding that perspective, not feeding that, that spirit that needs to be fed in their life. And they just okay with it because that's how they grew up, you know? And I'm just encouraging them. Like you just said, open your eyes and see that there's people out there that have what I'm telling you that you need. Yeah. That, there's they, people in your life that have what I'm telling you that you need in your life. That are seeking the same things you're seeking. That's right. That's right. Like that, that's how you really, if you want to experience the kingdom, you that's seek right. it first. Yep. Then everything else will be added. That's right. Good. Matthew good. 6, 33, like seek yep. it first. Then all these, le- I, I literally like chalked it up to all these less important things right. will be added. Yeah. <laughs> like if you just seek the kingdom that's first. Right. That's right. Uh, you want a better relationship with your wife? Okay, seek the kingdom yeah. first. Yeah. You want to be a better dad? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, seek the kingdom first. You want to be a better friend? Yeah. Seek the kingdom are, are first. Are those things important? Yes, but they're less important. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> exactly. A fact. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Is is your relationship with the kingdom and with the That's with right. the heavenly heaven like yeah. the arm the army of heaven, the god of heaven, is your relationship with him more important than all this? If it is, then all this stuff will be added. So good. And perspective just for a moment one more time, man. I know we're getting kind of Let's go back to this Peter guy. He, he's kind of famous in the Bible. Like he just, <laughs> he, he had a lot, I mean, infamous at some parts, but, but yeah. pretty, uh, think about like on the boat, man, when, when he, when he wanted to get out on the water, like, Hey, uh, if it's really you, Lord, let me, let me come to you. <laughs> so Jesus is like, here I hands am. out, <laughs> here I am. Come on out, you know? And his perspective shifted when the, when he felt the wind and the wave. Yes. When the trial in life came, when the tribulation in life came, he put his focus on that yep. instead of seeking first That's right. the kingdom. So what happened? The That's darkness good. actually befalled him, like it took him over for a moment, right? And yeah. you, you've seen the paintings where Jesus has his hand down and he's actually pulling Pete. Yeah. But I, I was reading in scripture, I can't remember how it was worded, but it says as he began to sink. That's right, yeah. As he began to sink, Jesus was like, no, 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 no. Yep. Eyes up, boy. I'm right here. Yep. And so his perspective changed back to, and, and I often wonder how that conversation transpired after that. I just see Jesus with his arm over Pete, like Pete, 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 man, I, I, I'm not leaving. Like you, you just, you need to keep your focus on me and everything st- else will take care sorry, of itself. Sorry, bro, but I still think Jesus was like the ultimate sarcastic king. Like, <laughs> Because I have this amazing <laughs> anointing for sarcasm, <laughs> and so I can recognize it from a mile away. And I gotta think that every time they had an opportunity, Jesus was elbowing him. Like, remember that one time you started sinking? <laughs> I just I gotta believe that he kept bringing that up to him over and over. Or or, or when they or when they started making fun of Peter, like ah ha, you know, Peter, Peter, you are <laughs> right. sinking and pin. Jesus looks at him and goes. Hey, punks, he was the only one that got That's out of the boat. Exactly he was the right. only one that got out of the boat. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah, I do remember. He was the only one who sank. That's right. I remember that. That's too funny, man. That's good. Man, this has been good. And I want I just want to remind all you guys out there that you were created mm. and you have been qualified yeah. and you have been uh, through the ringer sometimes and you've been through the fire sometimes for this moment right here in your yeah. life. Yeah for this moment right here. Maybe you're in traffic right now for this moment right here. I don't know what that looks like. Pray for that guy next to you. I don't know (laughs) what that looks like. In this point in your marriage right here, you've been processed as a kingdom kid. You've Mm -hmm. been um, through the trials, through the tribulations, through the victories for this moment right here. Yeah. To change the, the generational experience that your children are going to have mm. to change the, the ex the experiential faith that God has for you starts right now Amen. from everything that you've been through. So yeah, this is good, man. Scotty, why don't you pray us out, bro? Yeah. Father, we just, we give you praise. We thank you for being such a good dad and we thank you for never abandoning us during the hard times. Um, I thank you for just, putting on our hearts what I believe is on yours. And and I thank you for stewarding us into the seasons that we, uh, that we encompass. And I thank you that you're waiting. You're not only with us in those seasons, but you're, you're actually waiting on the other side and you're like our biggest fan and you're cheering us on. And uh, I want to thank you for the relationship that you've given us 
um, through a sacrificed son, the King of Kings, Jesus. I want to thank you for um, what he did that righted every wrong in our life. And I just, I speak this over anyone that, that may be feeling like you've messed up too big. Like there's, there's no grace for you. I'm just, I'm just speaking uh, against that thought in the name of Jesus. That is a lie. That is a lie from the enemy. And, and his grace is sufficient for everything that you've ever done. And uh, he is ready and he is waiting to receive you with arms wide open. And I thank you for your spirit, God, the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, the one that, that guides us and protects us, the one that allows us to, to move um, in, in the direction that you've called us to by his leading and by his countenance. I just thank you for this podcast, and I thank you for all those listening, Father. Would uh, they just know that they are loved by you? Would you just, just uh, cover them in your unfailing, undying, amazing love today? In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I think you said with arms wide open, all I could hear was Creed. With arms, with arms wide open. Wide open. <laughs> That's so good. Oh. Guys, don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, and share. Uh, partner with us financially if you want by texting the word Will Rhodes, W I L R O A D S, to 77977. Thank you for tuning in once again. Until next time, be blessed. Peace.